Paul Stamets, owner of Host Defense Mushroom Supplements, is one of the world's leading mycologists and probably the most popular due to his multiple appearances on The Joe Rogan Show, his Tim Ferriss interview, and his TED Talks. There's no doubt that he's done a lot for the mushroom industry, there's no doubt that he knows his stuff, and he's interested a lot of people into mushrooms and fungi in general. So you'd think whatever this guy must be selling, promoting, or making must be of top quality because he's the go-to guy for mushroom information. Not the case. Host defense is a waste of money and not what they promote it to be, and I have proof to back that up. I've uploaded about five or six different videos on mushrooms over the years, and every single video has some type of comment raising praise for Paul Stamets' products. Many along the lines of, screw what anyone else says, I'm siding with Paul, due to the credibility that he's built over the years, which is justified. I understand why people would do that. He has a reputation and credibility that people trust. Now, I know people will take something that I say out of context, so I have to make this disclaimer. I'm not personally attacking Paul. I'm not saying I know more than him because I don't. I don't hate him. I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm just sharing with you why his products from Host Offense are supplements that I will never buy and would encourage you to never buy because they are a bunk ass product. I'm not gonna make you watch my other mushroom videos, so let me briefly bring you up to speed because there are a couple of important things to keep in mind throughout this conversation. Mushrooms are absolutely incredible, okay? Used for millennia in many different cultures, different species and strains of mushrooms can bring different benefits to the human body. Reishi for the immune system, lion's mane for brain health and cognition, cordyceps for energy and ATP production, so on and so forth. The first thing to note is that a high quality mushroom supplement should be tested and have high amounts of beta glucans. Beta glucans are the primary bioactive compound found in mushrooms that give them their medicinal properties. The second thing to note is that there are com there are two completely different parts of the mushroom, and I use that term loosely right there, and they often get confused with one another. There's the actual mushroom, the fruiting body, okay, and then there's the mycelium. They are not synonymous. The mycelium is not a mushroom. It is its own entity. It is mycelium and vice versa. The mushroom is not mycelium. It is the fruiting body. If we say mushroom, that means fruiting body. That is the definition. Mycelium is not mushroom. Mushrooms are not mycelium. They are a part of the same system, but they are not the same. That is a fundamental part of this conversation that you need to keep in mind. Now, are there benefits to both the mycelium and the fruiting body? Yes, there are. Let's take the lion's mane mushroom, for example. In my lion's mane 101 video, I got a handful of comments asking about the studies showing benefits of lion's mane mycelium when in that video, I'm promoting supplements extracted from a lion's mane mushroom or fruiting body, and that's what I was promoting. And respectfully slow, and bleh, and respectfully so, I'm glad it's being brought up and I'm happy that my viewers are doing their best to do their own research. Both the lion's mane mushroom and the mycelium have, as a matter of fact, been shown to be beneficial in promoting neurogenesis and stimulating nerve growth factor. The mushroom, the fruiting body, contains hericinones and the mycelium contains erinacines, which both can be beneficial for this. So why was I promoting just a fruiting body extract? Because the issue here is that when people like Stamets say that you need to take the mycelium is that the majority of lion's mane mycelium products are not pure mycelium. They are myceliated grain, so the majority of the product is actually grain, and this applies to host defense. Let me break down myceliated grain. It's when companies grow mycelium culture on grain or some type of starch, usually something like oats. There are a couple of problems with this. Number one, certain mushrooms need to be grown on certain things. For example, reishi mushrooms should be grown on wood logs just as chaga needs to be grown on birch trees. This matters because the mushrooms use certain compounds and nutrients from these beds, these substrates, that they would typically grow in nature to develop their full nutritional and medicinal properties, okay? It's like a grass-fed cow versus a factory farmed cow. It makes a difference in the nutritional profile of the end product. So if it's not grown on its proper substrate, it may not reach its full full medicinal potential. Problem number two, the grain or starch is not being separated from the mycelium when it's time to collect the product. This is a massive issue because they're taking the grain and grinding that down along with the mycelium and selling that powder as a mushroom supplement to you when in fact there is no 
actual mushroom in this product because remember the mycelium is not a mushroom the fruiting body is the mushroom and you're literally getting filler and starch in your product that is low in beneficial bioactive compounds like beta glucans let's put this into further context with our lion's mane example Harrisenones and aranacines only occur in very small amounts in general and we've seen that myceliated grain products contain very little of the main bioactives like beta glucans so if the main bioactives are only present in very small amounts and myceliated grain, more abstract compounds like aranacines are likely non-existent. The other issue when discussing myceliated grain products, as if that wasn't enough, is that companies selling this type of supplement often point to research that was based on pure mycelia, like liquid fermentation mycelium. This is comparing apples to oranges. They're taking well done research that was done using pure mycelium, okay, pure mycelium, and using that to back up their myceliated grain product. They are not the same thing. That's called a scam. That's called having no integrity. That's called slimy ass marketing. So let's come back full circle and bring this back to host offense. There's a beta glucan testing method called Megazyme, which is used to determine beta glucan percentages in mushroom and mycelia supplements. It should be industry standard as it has a small margin of error. <coughs> Holy fuck. <coughs> It should be industry standard as it has a small margin of error and a high percentage of beta-glucans is a standard indicator of a high quality mushroom supplement. There was a paper published, which I'll link below, that used the Megazyme method to determine the beta-glucan content of 12 products, mushroom products, mushroom products, uh, purchased from Amazon. Uh, a couple of things immediately became clear from this paper. Number one, most products were impure because of contamination with undigested substrate, meaning they contained rice or grain or some type of starch in the product levels up to 83%. Number two, most products are not based on mushrooms, the fruiting body, but on biomass, the combination of mycelium with residual starch. That's false advertisement because mycelium is not a mushroom, remember? Yet they are labeled as mushroom supplements. That means the buyers of these products are being bamboozled because it's labeled as a mushroom product when in fact, there are no actual mushrooms in this damn product. Here are the 12 brand names of the products that were tested along with their results. Numbers two and three are host defense products, my community and the Stamets 7 extract. They are also some of the lowest in the 12 for beta glucans, clocking in at a pathetic 1.3 and 3.2%. If you notice, they are also two of the highest in starch. That's why I don't buy or recommend Paul Stamets products. Matter of fact, I recommend people don't buy them, but that's just me. If that wasn't enough, there was a study published a few years ago by Nature in partnership with the USP who set standards for pharmaceuticals, food ingredients, and dietary supplement ingredients. They evaluated reishi supplements purchased here in the USA. Of the 19, only five of them passed. The USP concluded the quality consistency of the reishi dietary supplements in the US market was poor, which should be carefully investigated. What's really cool is that of the five that passed the quality test, three of those were supplied by a company called Namex, which also supplies mushroom extracts for the two mushroom brands that I've been using for years. Let's go even further. Consumer Labs recently did a review of reishi supplements. This is, this is completely separate from the one that I just mentioned. They looked at seven different products and tested for quality and purity. Host Defense was one of them. And even though Consumer Labs had a super low standard for approval, they still couldn't approve host defense. Here's an excerpt from this report. However, Consumer Lab was unable to approve one product, Host Defense Mushrooms Reishi, due to concern that its label could mislead a consumer as to the contents. Unlike the other products, Host Defense claimed to be made from Reishi Mycelium only, meaning it does not contain the fruiting body, the mushroom, which is the part of Reishi with the highest concentration of beta-glucan. Its chemical fingerprint matched that of mycelium, but the inclusion of mushroom in the product's name and the image of fruiting body, rather than mycelium, on the front label could lead a person to believe that the product contains reishi fruiting body and to expect concentrations of compounds normally found in the fruiting body. <sighs> God damn. In fact, host defense contained hardly any beta oh, fuck. In fact, host defense contained hardly any beta glucan. Instead, it contained the highest concentration of alpha glucan, which is simply a polysaccharide from the grain brown rice on which the mycelia were grown. 
This is so bad, it's not even funny because so many people trust this brand just because of the name behind it. It's hilarious because I got so much shit from Stamets fans backing him up on my mushroom videos in the comments section. And like I said, I understand why, but let's re be real, his products are crap. And I'm not shitting on just host offense, I'm shitting on most grain supplements that are on the market so that you and I, the consumers, can stop wasting our money and stop being bamboozled and become educated consumers who demand a high quality product, can make proper buying decisions that will actually save our pockets and bring us health benefits. Something else Stamets does consistently is preach how mushroom supplements are no good if they are sourced from China and that you should stay away because of pollution and this and that. Make sure your mushrooms or your whatever products you're consuming are certified organic and please don't buy them from China. This is false, and the highest quality real mushroom supplements are grown in China because they do have high standards for quality and how the mushrooms are grown. It's also just too damn expensive to run a proper mushroom farm here in the United States. It doesn't make any financial sense to do it in the USA. He's been making this claim for 20 years, but has never shown any proof. There is zero evidence for pollution with mushroom products from China. It's fear mongering, and he's doing it consciously because he has a supplement business and a reputation to protect. So I think there's a massive learning lesson here for all of us, just because there's a fancy name or from someone who did an interview on a major platform is pushing a certain product doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best. And hey, let's be clear, I'm not doing this just for shits and giggles, just to build my own credibility. I'm trying legit, I'm like you and me, I'm just trying to make the best decision for my health and for my pockets, right? Uh, I just want to just dispel the bullshit that's out there because it's, it's that's just, Jesus Christ, it's so insane. It's literally, it's not passing tests it's not being approved, but yet everyone is saying that it's the best and whatever Paul Stamet says is, is good. And it's like, I respect the dude and his work, but that's kind of fucked up. So let's go make some proper buying decisions. I hope that this helped. Please take a look at my other mushroom videos if you want to uh, maybe get a little more educated on different strains of mushrooms and what they do. I don't know a lot about a lot of things. There's plenty I don't know jack about, but mushrooms is something I've been really interested in for the last couple of years and I'm not a mycologist or anything, but when it comes to uh, mushroom supplements and extracts, I know enough to make proper buying decisions and I just wanna share that information here on my channel because it really can make a difference. So let's not let people get away with this type of bullshit. I'm almost hesitant to plug the products that I personally use and recommend, the mushroom extracts that I use. They are real high quality stuff. I'm not gonna talk about them, but I will just leave links below for those who are interested. Doesn't matter where you get it from, as long as they can prove to you that it is tested high in beta glucans, very low in starch, that it's a pure product, hey, have at it, go buy the product. But if you do wanna know what I take, I'll link to my other mushroom videos uh, here in a playlist, which you can go ahead and watch, and I'll link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you, and I will see you in my next video.